Wow, I'm live and I'm going to invite my friend. Welcome, Instagrammers. Hi, Alana. And I'm going to invite and add. We'll see if the fabulous Alana Jacobs waiting for cabin fever to oh we did it a lot <laughs> somehow did it Oops. my dog barks when we make unusual sounds so perfect that's what you're hearing right now so i just danced around my house alana you did <laughs> yes that's in preparation great. for my inspiring conversation with my fabulous friend. <laughs> Did you dance to music or just your own? You sound? know, I, I danced to my Pandora. And so I wound up dancing to um, Paul Simon and um, Simon and Garfunkel. And, but it's only going in my ear, so my husband and definitely my dog are a little like, what's going on? <laughs> so to everyone else, it's silent. You hear all the music going on. Just me. So welcome, Instagrammers. I guess if you've tuned into this, you know me, and you might know Alana. Um, Alana, is, uh, we've known each other over 10 years, I would say. And um, we are, Alana is one of my fabulous young inspirations. She is beautiful and successful and she has a dance company named Cabin Fever. So I think we're all having a little Cabin Fever. Alana, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure. Thank you for that lovely introduction. Mm -hmm. I feel honored to be sitting with you and chatting with you in this bizarro time. Um, I guess I'm just happy to be able to have this conversation regardless of what, what is going on. Um, but mm -hmm. my name is Alana Jacobs, and I am the artistic director of the performance company slash dance company, Cabin Fever. And um, I'm also a Pilates instructor. And yes, I met Lori Yu, um, I think a little over 10 years ago. Uh, first, I knew about you, and then um, I worked with you at Atlas Pilates in Seattle. Mm -hmm. What a dream that was for four years. And um, I have become a friend of yours, and you're my mentor, and I've learned so much from you, and just value all the experiences we've had taking workshops together and me learning from you and teaching side by side. Um, and yeah, Cabin Fever is a performance company that started um, performances only in people's homes, inspired by the memories that happen in the homes. Um, so I would interview families and based on the, the home, the structure, the architecture, and the stories that have happened in the home, we created original um, music and dance in the spaces for our communities and for the public to experience. Um, so for the last 10 years, I've been leading that company and also a Pilates instructor. So yeah. Yeah, we're Pilates friends. Mm -hmm. Um, your performance art just blew me away when I saw um, your shows in Seattle. The ability to inter, well, not really interact, but be in the same space as the performers and get up close and be able to move around them. And, um, and, and that just 
blew me away because to me, art, visualizing art would always like it's over there and I'm over here. So how did you come up with that idea, Alana? And why did you name it Cabin Fever? Um, yeah, I, I came up with it because I am inspired by how people, I've always been inspired by how people live and the choices of how people decorate their home. And, um, and I also felt like I wanted to connect more with dance um, myself. And I wanted to give um, audiences the opportunity to connect to contemporary dance. And I felt like being in a home would be relatable, um, intimate. And I learned a lot more than I thought I would and have learned a lot um, about how people associate emotion with the spaces they live in. And um, we, we've we worked with families that were moving out of a home after living there for many years, or they had went through a trauma and are on the other side of it and want to express that. And then people that don't have any, didn't realize they had such an emotional connection with the space they lived in. And the moment we gave them permission to talk about their favorite rooms or their favorite nooks or stories that happened in their home, they became emotional. And so um, through the experience, I've learned that, that we don't always allow ourselves to, um, to connect to the inanimate objects that we spend so much time around and emotionally, um, but that, that they do have an energetic um, emotional connection with our bodies and our minds. So Can I answer the question? Yeah, <laughs> I think so. I'm trying not, I'm working on not interrupting because I'm a um, East Coaster and we just kind of like talk over each other and, you know? Yeah. And with the technology, I'm learning that if I'm talking, then I can't hear the other person. Right. So in that way, being online has been kind of very interesting gift for me to realize when I'm, you know, really listening. And um, yeah, so yeah. I think you're such a good listener that like when I think about your teaching, I feel like that is something you're really known for is is your like mm -hmm. observing, observing and your your listening. And I will say that as I was starting Cabin Fever, I was also starting my career as a Pilates instructor at Atlas alongside you and learning from you. And I feel like the process of, of creating with Cabin Fever and the amazing musicians and dancers that I've worked with and families, um, I learned from you the ability to see what's in front of me and and work with what's in front of me. Um, one of the amazing things about you as, a, as an instructor is that you don't come in with an agenda. I mean, I think you have, maybe I'm wrong, correct me if I'm wrong. I think you have goals for each client, but you also are so amazing at being present with them and listening and, and being creative with them and, and looking at what's in front of me and what's beautiful about this person and this shape and how can we make them feel even more beautiful and complete through exercises um, and not put my own agenda on you. Yeah, I think I work on that because I have like a million things I want to put all over everybody and I always have an idea and I always want to talk. I always want to be the one that's like, I have, I have something, I have something. Yeah. <laughs> so it's so funny. But it's true. I've learned maybe through knowing you and knowing people like you and getting kind of, you know, grayer over the years. Um, it's not as fun when it's just all about me. It's much more fun when my heart can be open and 
play with another open heart, that's so much more fun. Yeah. Or it's equally fun because it really is fun to be sharing what's inside and just putting it out no matter where it lands. Um, but lately, and the inspiration for these lives, I guess, is to kind of join hearts in this way. Yeah. So, um, thank you, Alana, for being my first guest and for really being the inspiration for doing this. Oh, that means like, <laughs> wow, that means so much. Thank we're gonna, you. We're going to cry. We are. I actually, I want to say one thing about you yeah. wanting to like, like you wanting to talk, but not wanting to talk like during your yeah. Pilates sessions. This is, I feel like it is an example of that creeping in for you. Because for me, I feel like when you used to teach me, there was one thing that you'd always like, you'd basically say like, you give me a hint of something that you want to work on, but that it was too soon to work on. So every time you saw my feet, you'd be like, um, we're going to talk about that another time. <laughs> I also have kind of gestures that, um, that once, once I'm working with somebody exactly, you'll know, my clients yeah. will know where I'm just, I'll like, we're going to get to that <laughs> because yeah, really no. we just do one thing at a time. Yeah. And we let that thing breathe. Yeah. And that what that's what makes um, working with ourselves in Pilates really, really interesting is holding space for one another and allowing ourselves to go there. Mm. So I have all these questions. I'm okay. going to ask another question. Okay. How, um, did you know that the entire world was going to have cabin fever simultaneously? <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could say, actually, I don't know if, no, I don't wish I could say I would know, but no, I did not know this. Um, <laughs> even though the company is called cabin <laughs> fever, I could not have predicted that this would be such a relatable phrase um, right now. Totally. And do you um, work with people or have you thought about working with people at, in their surroundings the, in a perhaps a similar way to your process? You know, I have not thought about that, but mm -hmm. it, it does. The lessons I've learned from working in people's homes in performance art are definitely there's something to be, um, it's definitely, I can connect it to the experience of what people might be going through now, but there's so many different versions of this quarantine and um, pandemic that I, it's so hard to, um, in some ways it's very relatable, everyone's sort of connected, but in many ways I think after this is all finished, there's gonna be so many stories um, that are vastly different, so many experiences that are so different. And it's, it's kind of overwhelming to try to connect people at this time for me. Mm -hmm. um, I will say that for me, um, one thing, I'm less aware of the lessons from Cabin Fever, which are like appreciation for home and realizing that the structure that you live in is very emotionally tied to your being. Here, I feel like since since we are in the home all the time, there's definitely rituals that are coming up for everyone. Like, this is where I eat breakfast. This is what I do in the afternoon to create a variety, a sense of variety for myself. This is when I get fresh air. I think there's definitely rituals being formed in this time. But I also think for me, what's coming up is trying to redefine what productivity means for those of us that are privileged enough to be at home and not out on the front lines or essential workers. Um, I think 
there's a new sense of what productivity means. Um, and I think it's, it's a good opportunity to redefine it and make it a richer meaning in general um, for ourselves. So I haven't figured out a way to work with people exactly like cabin fever where we get a tour of their house, but I think there's a way that we can take this moment and learn about ourselves and our community and our gratitude. Thank you. I have a family member who is um, on the front line and he's a uh, first responder he's a like EMT wow. and I think about him a lot I think wow what's what would it be like to really be out there yeah it's amazing amazing yeah. work so how is it Alana to be in your space with your newest family member <laughs> All day. Yes. All day. <laughs> I have a new um, a baby, um, and his name is Franklin. He's so cute, and it's, you know, it's so different. It's like the biggest identity shift I've ever had. Um, it's, I don't even know how to describe it, but definitely time has shifted in the way that a lot of people have described their experience of this time. Um, hours feel different and attention feels different and productivity feels different. Um, it's hard work. I, oh, here, so here's a way to answer that question, I guess. Um, I think I was talking to my friend, Mirav and my sister about this, um, that you can tell a lot about what you're going through by see for me i guess um by what you googled recently and mm. so the my recent google searches have been, <laughs> uh, my recent google searches have been how to unclog a milk duct we're talking breastfeeding here um <laughs> how uh, do cockroaches climb up the bath drains yeah um and what were the other ones? Uh, oh, the nutritious value of kimchi. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, oh, how do you, I wish I could forget this one, but how to live stream for free The Bachelors Listen to Your Heart. So just, there's a lot, a lot of different things happening, but uh, yeah. Have you got many, um new have you been following any new things on instagram hmm. like i have a couple i wrote them down oh um the tiny chef oh yes <laughs> i love the tiny chef so cool. and he's been doing exercise lately he's been doing like little side kicks and little um i love the tiny chef mm. and i've really been enjoying um Jimmy Fallon. I've never really been a Jimmy Fallon person before. And suddenly I'm just really enjoying him a lot. Have you found any Instagram -y things to watch or are you too busy with Mr. Franklin and oh Mr. Goodness. Nathan? I am pretty busy with those people. Um, but I, I have enjoyed women um, illustrators, I think it's called there. And so and they highlight many different um, women illustrators on mm -hmm. Instagram. And cool. it just any platform like that reminds you how many artists there are out there that are so talented. And um, it's such an easy way to when they post about them, you can you can look at their work really easily. It's a great mm. platform for that. Women uh, illustrators yeah oh yeah cool and alana tell me about art and core you have a new venture art and core yes art and core is a workshop and um now i'm starting to do individual sessions just this week um that combines my work as an artist with my work as a pilates instructor 
and um, exciting. Yeah, so it has a little bit of writing, exercises, Pilates, mindfulness. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a mishmash of things. Um, it's still sort of an experiment for me, but mainly the idea is for people to connect more to their intuition and because mm. um, I find that with the body um, we often don't know how to listen to our body mm -hmm. we know how to listen to what society tells us that our body should be feeling mm -hmm. or that we should be looking like and those messages are so loud mm -hmm. and so um I definitely struggle with that and, and, and I feel like it's an upward climb to remind ourselves that we actually know what our body needs and to feel good and mm -hmm. to strengthen. And so building trust in that, which art can do and Pilates can do, um, but just kind of having that be a mission statement basically throughout, I find that people that aren't used to using their bodies don't know how to trust listening to their bodies. And then mm -hmm. the athletes and dancers kind of are trained to not listen to their bodies as well, because as you know, it's like you, you need to perform. perform. Yeah. Like, Just do it. The exterior, what it can do out there. Yeah. And it's almost mm -hmm. scary how good we get at that. Yeah. At nodding and smiling and not feeling the pain right. as an athlete or a dancer. Um, yeah. I know. I had to, for a while, I had to um, stop taking lessons, Pilates lessons. I had to just stop the madness because I got so responsive to what other people wanted that I, my, my own intuition or my own voice got so small uh, I just feel like I had to like crawl back and crawl back and get my life get my body back and get my own voice back mm. so I love that you're doing that and it sounds like it sounds kind of like a workshop to me the way you describe it the mixture of writing and experiencing and moving yeah. sounds really cool Thank you. Yeah, I yeah. actually, was I like, did I know you during the time of getting your, your life back? Um, maybe let's not. see, I can, I, there was an exact event, actually, where I was, my back was kind of bugging me. And I thought it was because I just had done too many backbends. And like, I had to just put backbends away for the rest of my life. And then I went surfing. And I wound up being in a backbend on the surfboard, like exclusively for 10 days, I was in a backbend and I felt amazing. Yes. <laughs> and I realized like, oh my God, my body needs to backbend. Mm -hmm. And so I had to incorporate how to bring the backbend into my forward bends actually. Like I, because just oh, hanging right. out in the back bend all the time wasn't really good either. It wasn't just like just shoving myself in a back bend. I had to like, how does the back bend work with the forward bend? That became the inquiry. So I know your question was about the timing and I'll say um, it's 15 years ago. Mm. So I wasn't. I wasn't with you. I think I, I met you like a couple years after that. Yeah. So I had kind of been through that particular, but it was pretty fresh that I was really into listening to myself. Yeah. And I do really try to bring that when I work with people. And it's a challenge because many people, especially when I travel, they kind of want me. Well, I, I don't know because I'm not in there. But I wonder if they want me just to drive their bus and like get them to do something big. Or do they want to, me to help them to learn how to go in and listen, which can be kind of a more quieter process. 
it's not as sexy. Like you don't right. get to flip over and get pictures for Instagram. Right. But if the timing is right, it kind of is sexy. It can be. I need to redefine that. Going in can be really sexy and very moving. Yeah. Like when you've taught me and there's been like these comments that the light bulb comments and they're mm -hmm. so subtle in terms of from the outside looking in like, oh, nothing shifted if, right. if from the outside of the, the studio. They didn't do anything different, but it can be like, you know. Totally. And that I'm, I am learning that the, if you know, if I know how to look or if I know how to like, if I allow myself to like really pull back and allow my person to have a tiny shift, that's, huge I can see it if I pull back enough if I kind of stay in the weeds of I, then I, it's like I can't see it it's just and then I'm like no more do it again do it again do it again you're not doing it <laughs> <laughs> if I pull yeah. back I, sometimes I can see it can you hear that car alarm I'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> It's very small in here. Okay. Yeah, okay, even okay. Though you might feel like it's like this. So with Art and Core, you're taking a group or a person, an individual? So it started with groups in Chicago. It started, now I, I live in New Orleans. I should have said that. But um, in Chicago, um, about a year and a half ago, I started with artists um, doing weekly sessions or workshops of Art and Core. And it became kind of this community uh, accountability group almost, um, mm -hmm. because uh, almost a support group for artists, because when you need to create a practice as an artist, a freelance artist, it's, it's really hard and, and oftentimes not rewarding and the moments you have rewarding times it's addictive and wonderful but there's a lot of in between where it's nice to have support so the goal was to have a practice that is both physical and um, mindful and emotional to then be able to create with an mm. open mind uh. um, and we would try to find blocks in the body and mind so I'd say, and I still do this, you know, do you have a place in your body that feels either weak or blocked or um, that is emotional for you, whatever that may be. And let's create a physical exercise that is symbolic of you opening that. So mm -hmm. it doesn't necessarily oh, like. <laughs> I love that. But, you know, I'm not a physical therapist and there's so many ways to approach one body part, but it was more like a mantra, like a physical mantra. So mm -hmm. like, okay, so your sternum feels tight and feels like it's, there's stuck energy there or it's weak or whatever. Mm -hmm. Let's do it. Um, you're going to lie on a, a pillow mm -hmm. in the morning and you're going to breathe and you're going to think about opening that mm -hmm. and that's your that's for this week you know every week is different but mm -hmm. um but mainly like to be your own witness and mm -hmm. is often to have a witness is often the healing aspect of of or way to heal um mm -hmm. and sometimes we don't have the luxury of having someone else witness us so especially mm -hmm. in quarantine when people are alone so we have to learn how to be our own witness consciously because mm -hmm. we mm -hmm. are already are there. So, but mm -hmm. be being conscious about it. Like, this is my time where I tend to myself. Mm -hmm. I don't have the answers, but I listen. Mm -hmm. Oh, that is hard to do that for yourself, isn't it? It's so hard. Yeah. It's so hard. I still have not figured out how to do it but that's why uh -huh. I started the class because that's the type mm. of class I want to take right <laughs> so you're providing a space and being the witness and uh, facilitating people giving people ideas 
four ways they can do it themselves once you click off. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's that that's the um, kind of like the accountability thing that um, definitely shows up in Pilates a lot, I, I think, to have someone there weekly that is saying to you, I see you and, and this is serious and you're working on yourself and, mm -hmm. and I'm helping you do that. I'm like shining the light for you. Right. Right. Cool. And do people sign up? You do it at, do you do it weekly or do you have a couple of classes a day or what do you, how do you structure that? So in the beginning it was every week, but um, since having Franklin, I, I have taken a break, but since being in quarantine, I've done one class, one workshop mm -hmm. on Zoom, mm -hmm. and we're all learning how to do that. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I'll sure. probably do another workshop as well. I'll I'll announce it um, mm -hmm. when it feels the time feels right. But currently, I'm working on doing individual sessions. Yeah, it seems like this would be a great thing to do for individuals. So if somebody wants to do it, they could just. Um, yeah. contact you via yes. via what what are they um doing? you could direct. um direct message me on instagram since this is what they're seeing right now okay. or um my website is on my instagram page and you can find my okay. contact information there. direct oh that's what dm is okay yes. Yes. <laughs> i thought it was pm private message right that would that would be good too although it might be yeah. confusing with like am pm stuff that's true so i'm just there's so many things to learn i had I to know. really do some research to figure this out and i think with that we've done a really good job alana i was so nervous i was like are we gonna do a test run and you're like no let's just <laughs> no nope, we're just going for it <laughs> i watched some kind of youtube like dj whoever i watched some really fun um examples mm. um some kind of people and venues like that I normally wouldn't like another person I've discovered during quarantine is Tabitha Brown. Oh, I don't know. Tabitha Brown. She's a vegan and she's hilarious. And um, so as I've been researching through, how do you do an Instagram live? I've kind of learned some super fun people. So check out Tabitha Brown, vegan, funny, vegan. funny lady. Funny vegan. And Alana, everybody. Now I know on Instagram or what I've learned in my research is that you're supposed to like interact with people. Mm. And, but I don't really don't know how to do that. <laughs> so I'm going to try to interact with, oh, my friends in Barcelona. What do I do? Ooh. I just went, oh, they joined. Are they here? Oh. Did I wave? What did I do? Can I wave? Oh, I I'm just going to start wants... waving. Who wants to ask Alana a question? Or Lori. Let's or be me. honest here. I was like, Lori, I should be interviewing you. No you way. <laughs> no way. I love this. I'm just going to wave to all these people and then find out what happens. Hi, Mom. Hi, everybody. Oh. Hi, Milan. Hi, this is fun. Hi. Oh, what's that? Anybody Abu have questions for Lori Coleman Brown? Abu Dhabi. Um, how is she spending her quarantine? Hi, Mia. What are her favorite exercises recently? <laughs> you know, when you said, Alana, um, that you say you're, whatever, you're in art and core, and you're, you're saying you have this block, and the person is like, okay, I have this block. And then my mind immediately went to like, oh. what's your favorite Pilates? What, I mean, what Pilates exercise? Because that's, Pilates is such my vocabulary. <laughs> my mind immediately went to like, do your, do the Pilates exercise that would help that block. And then all of a sudden I imagined myself doing the saw. Right. Apparently, the saw is one of my exercises. For you, for your block. Yeah. 
Well, when you were talking about the the sternum, so I I kind of, um, I dropped into my sternum quickly while you were saying, breathe on a pillow or whatever. And I was like, saw, I want to stand up and I want to do the saw. And I want to do the saw like like a bow and arrow. When I do this, I want to twist and then I want to pull and reach across my bow and arrow. Yeah. Ugh. That's why I, I miss having you as a teacher because I feel like you would be like, you would pick like an exercise I never would have thought of for a sternum thing. And you'd be like, lift your pinky toe. And that's <laughs> that. Oh, that's so Ramana, lift your pinky toe. Well, <laughs> it comes through. Yeah, we come through each other. Yes. So I want to um, Looks like we see. have some questions here. Oh, we do. Oh, my gosh. Thank you. Um, Atlas Pilates, what's your favorite thing about New Orleans? And my mom wants to know why does Lori inspire you? What's oh, your gosh. favorite thing about New Orleans, Alana? Now my dad's gone. <laughs> I love your dad. Okay. Hi, Alana's dad. Um, Freddie. 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 Yeah. Yes. Hi, My dad. favorite thing about New Orleans is the community and the porch life and how people, before all of this went down, I knew most of my neighbors and people are so generous about their time and their compassion on a regular mm. basis. It is mm. unlike any place I've ever lived in that way. Mm. Um, so that's definitely my favorite thing. And, and small talk here is like really on fire. People are, the small talk is never about the weather. It's, it's, it's really people go there quickly and then it's gone, but it's genuine. Mm. Like what, well, give me an example. Okay. That's good. Um, good question. Uh, well, just the other day, I I was walking by my neighbor and and she said hi. I said hi, Gail. She said hi, and she she was sitting on up like right outside of her porch, and she said, um, you know, when Katrina came, mm -hmm. the water came to right here, and they had to pick us up in a boat. Wow. Um, Okay. She said they were dropping water from helicopters that were giant. And I was, and just stood there listening to her story and was super inspired. And then, and then we moved on. Mm. Um, and it didn't feel, it felt like small talk, but it was. I brutal. see. I see. I see. Like, like deep sharing. Like sharing. Like and brief, brief, deep, dropping really quickly into a deep share yeah exactly yeah. and not being afraid to that. say hello from across mm. the street but not like feeling obligated it feels like oh hi we're, we're neighbors and we need to be there for each other um mm -hmm. so I, I can really appreciate that about new orleans mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. why does Lori inspire me uh so many things i think you are, and Lori is a really brave teacher. Um, she's, I think the reason why she's has so many fans and students is because she uses the classical Pilates map as a way to express her own creativity as an artist teacher. And um, like I said before, you're a really good listener and observer, and you want to collaborate with your students. So it's not like you're going to ever say a script that um, you just is one sided. You're totally there with them and want them to meet you halfway and give them the opportunity to meet you halfway um, without intimidation and more, I mean, if it's necessary intimidation, but like, that's not your um, mode of, of maybe like, that's not your main go-to mode of teaching. It's more mm -hmm. 
seeing the person in front of you and what can I do to have them meet me halfway? What can I say to inspire them to meet me halfway with their own bodies and growth? So mm -hmm. that's part of why I'm inspired by you. Mm -hmm. I'm inspired by Alana. That wasn't a question. <laughs> <laughs> because I love your like chill I guess it relates to that deep dive sharing that you described in your New Orleans neighborhood so it seems like such a great match that you're there um, because I feel like you do that you hold space for people and certainly for me to get into those deep dives that I really crave at, um mm -hmm that I really like to connect with people in that way. Mm. So, and I'm also really inspired by your, you know, what you created with Cabin Fever. Um, and I guess the scale of it, like when I was like an artist or a dancer, I, my scale was always like, well, it has to be big to be something it has to be you know if I don't have my leg this high or if I don't have if I'm not performing in this venue then it's not enough and I've just been inspired by your joy and your attention to and love for the detail and the intimate. And um, so that's really inspiring to me. Thank you so much for saying that. Yeah, yeah. And, and I'm also really inspired, I guess, by your family too, because your sister, your photographer sister. Joy Jacobs. Joy Jacobs rocks the house. I definitely, her photographs, um, of your, in, what do you call it, installations? Yeah. Performance installations? Sounds good. You know, each photo is like, like, you know, my one of my favorite, I, I have two favorites that mm. I can think of right now. Joy is one, there. I hope Joy is there because she rocks the house. It's the three girls over the couch and they're at three different levels of coming mm. up from the couch yeah, well, that picture just makes me cry. I love it. Mm. And um, <laughs> plus, I was at that performance, I believe. Yeah, heart. Content. I think I was. Yes, that was. I think the first one that I went, uh, was able to go to. Yeah. And the other photo, oh, it's the two musicians. Oh no, it's a one musician and one dancer. I think. Oh no, it's two musicians. It's white. And there's definitely like kind of a cello player, I believe. The stairs. The stairs. And there's two artists. And wow, That's the shot. I just, just love that. And so that attention to detail and the focus and the beauty of presence and what is here now. Mm. inside of an individual or inside of a photograph. Like if I was a photographer, I'd be like, okay, I'm going to get stairs and I'm going to put like 50 million people on there and they're all going to be doing 50 million different things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. no, she has Pilates, a having this individual right there helps me just <laughs> where Joy Jacobs, she knows how to frame what is happening, doesn't she? Mm. She really does. She has such a talent. I hope she's here to, to yeah. see that. We'll have to save this so she can listen to that. Oh, yeah. And you'll uh, have to help me save this because I can't be trusted to know which buttons okay. to click. I don't know if I'm just worthy either. But that reminds me because you said about it helps you tune in. looks like you have another question. I know Lori is very talented with words and metaphorical visualizations. Any useful tips? So this is like kind of bringing, oops, kind of bringing Joy's vision and lens. How do you frame your, yeah, yeah. your oracle words? My tips. 
or flaming. I don't know. I breathe with my client for sure. I kind of move. I breathe and move with my client and I pretend that I'm, I try to pretend that I'm in their body. And, um, yeah, I try to, I, I try to allow myself to edit, 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 edit. Lots of, I think Pilates instructor, wow. If I could just be clear, because clarity, I don't believe is one of my strengths. Edit as a teacher. And let the thing, let the one thing rise for the day or for the lesson. And trust that the right, some, for me, I allow myself at this point, because I've been teaching a really kind of a long time, um, that, at that thing that rises might be, might happen in the very last repetition of the very last exercise. Like I will finally, I will wait that long for the, the thing to rise. Because as a younger teacher, I would just, I'd want to be like, I want to get it. I want to get it. I want to get it. I want to, I want to affect this person. I want to help them. I want to help. I want to help. I want to help. I want to help. But now I've given myself a lot more space. What do you just describe what you mean by the thing would rise? The thing where the mind and body, the client's mind and body Mm. Gets get something. Yes. There's a, a and then I try to frame it for them and acknowledge and be like, that's a thing, or there's something there for you. I see you. Mm. I see the thing. How do you know that they feel the thing? Like, what are some telltale signs Sometimes that, like, they it's feel like, that click? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a great question. Um, I think it's, uh, like, sometimes it's their eyes, like, a look, or um, <laughs> or a breathing. Like a a contented breathing breath pattern, or a an, a body that just just keeps wanting to move. Like say they're doing leg springs and they're doing the bicycle and they're like, I'm doing the bicycle and I'm sort of counting and looking at the clock, you know, like eight, seven, six, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and then you and you help them with a touch or a thought or or anything whatever that thing is and all of a sudden the body in front of you just goes like it would it it would never stop it just wants to go it wants to go it's it want, it just like found its groove and it just will not and then i'll let, let it go i'll be like that's the thing yeah. So those are some of mine. How about you? When you feel a person click. Um, that's a really, I don't know. It's a hard, it's, I guess, like a shift that happens if there's someone that moves really fast and they all of a sudden go slow or if someone mm -hmm. that moves really slow goes fast or I like that yeah. image of them looking at you almost yeah. like there's sort of magic that happens in Pilates um, if you don't do anything as a teacher or something, mm -hmm. or if you just like do just enough. And I feel like I've learned that from you, but it's still really hard for me as a teacher to find those moments and to trust myself to find mm -hmm. those moments. Mm -hmm. But there's a real magic that can happen that has, 
that has to do with little meddling that, you know, in that moment. Um, yeah. But it reminds me of one time when I was like teaching someone and I was um, swatting a fly, like every so often there'd be a fly and I kept like swatting it away. I was like, okay, but I kept teaching. And the person was like, is that energetic work you're doing? They thought that I was like doing some motion and potion on that. <laughs> and I, totally. it made, made me like think about it. I was like, no, but cool that you were cool with that. Yeah, you could just be like, yeah. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's my new shtick, you know? Right. I'm glad you felt that. <laughs> right, so I felt that Reiki, yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Oh, so nice to see you, Alana. So great to oh, see we you. Have another, we have another question. Should we answer another question? Sure. Somebody is asking... Look at me. I'm so fancy. I can read the questions. Have you thought about what measures would be appropriate to reopen Pilates studios while preserving safety and health? Wow. You know, I work at Atlas Pilates in Seattle, and that's, that's a studio, a very fabulous professionally run studio by Teresa Shoup and CJ Methy. And they are, um, they have researched the best cleaning products and they're very, um, I don't know, snappy. I'm going to say snappy. So I'm in complete trust of what um, my folks in Seattle are going to tell me to do. And I have been making masks. So out of um, little pieces of fabric that I have around here. So I have my masks and I have some to give away. If anybody lives in Seattle and they want a mask, I, I'll give you one. <laughs> um, that's my answer for that. I guess I've had like a sci-fi imagination, like there would be curtains hung in the studio where there's like quadrants because we have a beautiful big open studio and it's and I imagine like white curtain quadrants mm -hmm. and and of course all the teachers are wearing white because if this is science fiction <laughs> right. yeah. but Alana are you working in the studio these days I, over the summer before um, I had Franklin, when I was really pregnant, I was working at Uncle Joe's Pilates. Shout oh, out. Yeah, shout out. yeah, um, yeah, Uncle Joe's. Hey. Great studio. <laughs> um, a great group of instructors. They're all so talented. And they were so welcoming to me. And I've just started to, like, peek out of my own um maternity leave quarantine as this quarantine has begun so i've yet to figure out life after this um mm. but that's the best studio in new orleans um i think and i feel proud to know them and to have worked with them so mm. yeah hey larry hi juan hi guys hi carla <laughs> <laughs> Um, but you guys are in a lockdown, right? No studios are open. In right, right. So people are doing um, online Pilates right now or, you know, classes via Zoom. Um, so that's what we're doing. And that's what they, that studio is doing. Yeah. So thank you, Alana. I think we're going to wrap up now. Yeah. And I have a request for you, and I want to see your signature move. Oh. Oh my goodness. Or your signature shape or move. What's it going to be, Alana? Here, I'll yeah. have my husband hold the. Um... Oh, hi, Nathan. <laughs> Here, you can uh, hold this. So okay. What should be my signature move? I really like. Your... Um, I like this move. I like this move. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I like that one, too. That's all you're giving me. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And, um, I'm going to love it. I'm going to give my signature move. Yes. 
My I have a special dance, but today I'm gonna my my um move today is gonna be my my saw my archer saw. Mm. Stretch that sternum. Stretch that sternum. <laughs> Thank you, Alana. Take care. I Thank I you. love you and I hug love your you family. So much. Love, love you. you. Love Bye. your family. Say hi to Darren. All right. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye, my Instagrammers. Super fun. Bye, Instagrammers. Thanks oh, for Alana. Sure. Wait. Before yeah. we sign off. How how to save it? Yeah, we're gonna have to figure out how to save. I don't it. know how to. Okay. All right. Well, if this is not saved, it was really fabulous and we'll remember mm. it in our hearts. We will. <laughs> okay. Ciao, ciao. I'll just show you Franklin for the very end. Oh, please, please, please. Oh, my gosh. Franklin. Hi, buddy. Who's Doesn't look like he's going to smile, but, you know. <laughs> I saw you gave him a little try. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. -bye. Bye.